thought today would be a good opportunity to talk about what I think might be the best purchase that I've ever made. This is a Prusa Mini 3D printer. It came partially assembled and it cost me about $459. You can get it completely disassembled for $429. It took me about an hour to finish the assembly. It was all very easy to do. There was a substantial learning curve trying to figure out how to get things to print the way I wanted them to. But, you know, after like a couple of weeks of trial and error, now I have more problems with my 2D printer than I ever have with this 3D printer. I have no experience doing 3D stuff. I'm a graphic designer, so I do all 2D stuff. So working in that third dimension was, it just absolutely blew my mind. I'm completely out of my element. I have no idea what I'm doing. There's a few things that drew me towards getting one of these and wanting to learn how to figure out how to use it. One of them is that I do a lot of projects on the main channel that I kind of just hacked together and they would always be just a little bit easier if I had a way to print certain materials. There's always something that if I could just have it materialize, it could take it one step further. Another thing is that I like to buy specialized parts that are often on sites like Etsy and they're almost always 3D printed. Special parts for like a certain handheld device or certain retro consoles or even coffee machinery. A lot of these specialized parts are too niche to have big production lines. So they just print them in their home and sell them on Etsy as people purchase them, like made to order. And a lot of the time, those specialized pieces are available just online for you to have the model. You can just have the, the, the file, the 3D printed file. And then you can just, it, it's just there, it's just in your house. You just download the file and then there it is. And the third and final reason is that I have like a kind of a 3D print mentor. His name's Layer Shift. He always sends me like controller mods and stuff. He was mailing me a lot of 3D printed stuff. And it would have just been a lot easier if I could just print it in my own home. So instead of sending physical items back and forth, he could just send me a file and then here it is. The first things that I printed were things that were part of the Prusa software. Just a little test print stuff like this frog right here. And they also have a whistle. <whistles> Jesus Christ. And the first thing that I printed that I just pulled off of the internet was this Zelda. It was naked, because I thought it was funny. I literally typed in Zelda and this was the first thing that came up. And then I was working on a video where I bought a bunch of accessories for portable emulation devices, like the MiU Mini and MiU Mini Plus. And I found 3D files that I can just print on my own. So this was a case that the, the creator suggested putting felt in. And it's, it's perfect. I just printed this in my own house. It took a long time to print because it is a lot of plastic. And this might be my favorite. This is a little like hard rugged case for the original MiU Mini. And I also like the idea of putting felt in it. So I did that. I might need to reprint this clip here because it doesn't close all of the way, but that should be easy to, to remodel because it's just one piece. I don't have to reprint the whole thing. At this point, I knew nothing about modeling. I would just print whatever's available and do very minor adjustments in the Prusa Slicer software. The Prusa Slicer software is really good for printing stuff, but it's not very good for, for tweaking things or modeling your own stuff. It was also around this time I learned that I'm using PLA filament. This is a fun, like bright blue Prusa one that I have. But for the most part, I've been using white and black uh, Jesse filament. Yeah, and I did have a lot of issues with the print not sticking to the print bed. And layer shift told me to raise the temperature. So now my print bed is always at 65 degrees Celsius. And that's something you can set in the Prusa Slicer software when you save your file to be printed. I also now regularly wash this bed with soap and water. I messed up a lot of prints and I still do. I try not to waste too much plastic, but there exists a website where they will just melt down all of your scraps and turn it into a roll of filament. So I've been saving everything that I've messed up and all the stuff that I don't need anymore in a box and I'll just ship that off when it's full enough. And right now it is plenty full. It'll probably be a weird gray colored mixture, but for the most part, it doesn't matter what color these things are. I keep talking about layer shift. He's the guy who made a lot of the parts 
for this 8-bit Doom controller that, that I have and that I love so much. This Omnimod, that's his company. And this was, uh, I think this is 3D printed and this is resin printed. Something like that. Resin printing is a whole other process that I don't want to deal with. Uh, he recently sent me these buttons. These are arcade buttons that have hot swappable keyboard switches and they are awesome. But they are not meant for this 8-bit do arcade stick. Because you see, they are screw-on buttons. And there it goes. The screw on buttons and the APID Do Arcade Stick doesn't have enough room for something to screw on. So he sent me a file for these little clips. I think this was an older prototype. The newer ones are already in there. Uh, these just clip on and, and they, they screw in and they keep it from moving. It's perfect. And now they don't move. They're not going anywhere. It's awesome. It's amazing. 3D printers are amazing. Then I started to see all different problems around my house that could be solved with having something like this. But if only I knew how to model something in 3D myself. The first thing that I tried was I wanted to hide the cables on my desk. That should be simple enough. I just need like a riser to go under my monitor that all of the cables could hide under. And the only software that I knew how to use a little bit was the Prusa slicer. So I made a very primitive like box with legs and little jigsaw pieces so they snap together. So here's my janky cable runner that took eight hours to print each part. But now I'm doing that again for another room that has a white desk. So I'm printing white cable runners. Ah, broke it. Ah, broke it. But yeah, that software is not the best for like making stuff. You can only really do like boxes and, and cylinders. So after that, I came up with some other ideas that would help me around the house. Actually, after that, it was a video idea. I got one of those screens for the Xbox Series X. Actually, this is the S. And I wanted to be able to use it completely portably. So I mounted a battery to the side of big, stupid, like 110 or something watt battery. I don't know, I have a whole video on it. But yeah, I modeled this little mount that mounts to the side of the screen. And now I can play my Xbox wherever I want for about like 45 minutes until the battery dies. But that's what I mean. I had an idea for a video that would have been a lot easier if I had a 3D printer. And you know what? It was, and I thought I made it for a great video. Another dumb, simple thing that was solved by this was I have a bunch of little extracts for my coffee stuff. I got like hazelnut extract, vanilla extract, peppermint extract, you know, and they just leak. They, they just, I don't know what it, what it is with those things. They just, they just leak and then they ruin the cabinets and stuff. So it's so easy. I just made a little tray. It just, it's just a box with, a, with, with another box cut out of it. And then they, they have a tray and I didn't need to buy anything from TJ Maxx. I just printed it in my house. I decided, you know what? My coffee machine, the, 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 the stupid steam knob is just too, it's, it's, I wish I could grip it better. So boom, there you go. I made a little piece, pop that right on the steam knob. And now I can, I can turn it. But that was a little loose and it started to slide around a lot. So, I made, I made a lot more prototypes. There's more than this. This is just what I could grab. Because I got the dumb idea. I didn't want to take the whole espresso machine apart. I got the dumb idea to put a piece on the back of the steam knob and a piece on the front and screw it together. See, it works. Screws. But I just, I just couldn't get it right. So I printed a million other ones with, with the screws like, like this one has little grips on the screws so it's easier to screw together. And I just couldn't get it tight enough. I couldn't get it to feel right and whatever. And then I decided, wait a minute, I just need it to be tighter. I just, I just, I just made, the, I made the hole just, just smaller. That was it. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. I learned there's a setting called fuzzy walls. I made, I made the walls fuzzy on the outside of the inside. Now it's got some grip and now it's not moving at all. It's, it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect little extension of my steam knob. My friend Pacini is not a believer in this whole 3D printing lifestyle. And he asked me if I had any uh, lav mic clips because he's shooting a wedding tomorrow. And uh, he broke his, his lav mic clip. And I was like, no, I don't use them. I use, I use tape. But I was like, what type of lav mic do you have? I'll look it up. 
and he and he said the the road whatever the hell so i said all right here's seven here's seven of them there they're just there those are 12 dollars each if you buy them on amazon playstation just announced the project q which is their streaming handheld tablet that is basically just a kindle with a dual sense sawed in half and slapped on the sides stuff like this already exists you can just use your phone with a dual sense controller so here it is Literally, we're looking at just a piece that holds the DualSense controller, a case for the Google Pixel 3a XL. Those are two pieces that I found on a website called Thangs. It's like a 3D printing search engine. I use that for pretty much everything. I imported both of these things into Tinkercad. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned, somewhere around the whole Xbox Series S and, and, and coffee extract situation, I started using Tinkercad. It's much simpler than all the other 3D programs that I've tried, and it's a lot more robust than like a uh, Prusa slicer. So I imported both of these pieces into Tinkercad, and then I just connected them with a, with a rectangle and, and some little supports, and, and dude, it came out perfect. It's awesome. This is something, again, that's gonna help me for a future video. So right now, uh, I'm gearing up to go to a convention called Too Many Games in Pennsylvania. We have a panel there. I, it, it's, a, it's a big like retro gaming convention. That's like a big like retro gaming flea market. I like going there and just shopping around for retro stuff. And also, of course, meeting people. A lot of my YouTube friends are gonna be there. A lot of just people who like watching the videos are gonna be there, so I'll, I'll see you there. We have a panel and also a signing. And when people come to the signing, I want to be able to like give them something. And I figure like, why not make little trinkets with this 3D printer? So I just I wanted something like that people could uh, make some use out of. So I figured why not like some sort of like stupid little like phone holder that had like the Wolf Den branding on it. So I completely over engineered this one. This is a phone holder and it can hold two or three Sharpies in the back. And on the side, it has slots for micro SD cards, Nintendo Switch cartridges, and regular old SD cards. Except that this is the second one that I printed now, and uh, the, the SD card uh, holders are still a little too small. I tried to make it 5% bigger, I guess I gotta make it 10% bigger. But this is too big. This took like three and a half hours to print, and I don't wanna be given these away. I'm gonna, it's gonna take me forever to print like a hundred of these. So this is a hot off the presses. This is another one that I just printed off of fangs that somebody made and I just put the Wolf Den branding on it. The, the youtube.com slash Wolf Den didn't really come out too good on there. Uh, I've never actually used this. So let's see how it works. I guess they just kind of slot together, right? Oh, there, there she goes. Uh, so it's only for horizontal. That's fine though. So if it's a little smaller, it might work for vertical too. It would be nice if it worked for vertical too. See, we're learning. This is, we're, we're doing some, some product testing here. If you look at it from the back, you got the two wolf logos. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And you can take it apart and just put it in your pocket. I think we can make it a little smaller. But yeah, I'm gonna hopefully print something like this, maybe that's a little smaller that will be easier to print on mass, and I'll be giving them out for the first couple of people who show up to the signing. Right now, I'm working on doing some whacked out shit for Game Boys with this thing. Uh, those are really complicated 3D files that uh, are, are uh, very difficult to, to mess around with. I'm gonna probably have to learn how to use a different program other than Tinkercad. I might scrap this whole phone holder idea and instead do uh, Game Boy cartridges, like dust covers you can put in your Game Boy or your analog pocket to prevent dust from getting in. This thing feels like a superpower. It, it, it feels like magic. It's like uh, I, I, I have a need that needs solving. I could just I could just solve it. I could just print it in my house. Nor where normally I would have to go on like Etsy or Amazon and pay $10 for some random thing that I'm not gonna like. And if I don't like it, I can just make it a little better. But it also drives you crazy because then you end up making seven steam knobs. But yeah, this thing's sick. I'm glad I got it. And if you're interested at all, don't worry about uh, sucking at it or, or not knowing what you're doing. I didn't, I didn't know anything. There's forums that exist for this type of stuff. You'll just, you'll figure it out. You run into a problem, you fix it. And then, and then you go from there. I forgot I'm wearing one of the first things I tried to print. 
I use these Rode Wireless Go microphones for recording these videos. And this expensive lav mic that I have has like a screw on piece at the end that makes it stick out. It doesn't like fit in the Rode Wireless Go like headphone jack like well enough. It connects, but it's, it's I wanna say like a little loose. So there exists this case that I forgot the name of. I'll, I'll link it somewhere. And I think only the files were available. So that I think is what pushed me over the edge to wanna buy this thing. Cause I wanted one already. And then this was the first thing that I tried to print. And there was a lot of trial and error with this too. The top piece was way too small for the lab that I have. So I went into the Prusa slicer and I, I made it just super long and now it's perfect. And it's locked in there. This thing ain't never coming out. It's awesome. And then Wood got this whole setup and I gave him one. Because, uh, uh, you know, th these things would normally cost like 40, 50 bucks. And I can just hit a button and then it materializes. Again, it's like magic. Anyway, let me know what you think about this thing. I'll, I'll maybe do a follow up if I do a lot more stuff with it. I'm sure I will, but uh, this is my first couple of months with it and it's it's been absolutely awesome. Make sure you turn on notifications for this channel because I don't, I don't it, it, there's no schedule. I just post whenever I feel like it. Thanks for watching though. Thanks for coming over here. Have a good, uh, whenever I see you, you know?